is my last video in this apartment. I'm really, really sad. I have the most beautiful view from my window right now. All of this beautiful natural light. Oh, I'm going to miss this space so much. But we're going to close it out with one last final video. I'm going to do a full face of new makeup. Some are quite viral and popular, some are new to me. We have a good mix of that here. And some I'm like super duper excited to mess around with. So let's go ahead and get into it. I've prepped my skin with just moisturizer. How I prepared for this move, if you missed it, I am moving. I did film a get ready with me if you want the details on that. I've packed up all of my makeup, but for video ideas, <laughs> I've bagged everything. For foundation, I have been dying to try these new about face foundations. These are the performer foundations. I saw Patrick Ta use the foundation on Halsey when he did her makeup and these looked beautiful. So let's see what shade I am. Probably L1 neutral. So this one looks like it has a sponge applicator. I think that one is going to be a little light on me. I hate when I pick the wrong shade for myself. It blends in really naturally to my neck though. Let's try LN2 or L2. I think this one will probably be better. Yeah, we'll do L2. I do like this applicator. I know some people are going to be grossed out by it dipping back in. That doesn't bother me really. Did run out of product for my forehead, but I do have myself a big forehead. Blending this in with my current favorite, my Rose Ink. Number three brush. Ooh, this has a very pretty finish to it. It's quite natural and the coverage really blended out. I feel like it doesn't have that much coverage, but I don't know why. I just had a feeling that this foundation was going to be a beautiful one and it really is sitting gorgeous on the skin. There's been so many foundations to review lately. I just did the new Makeup Forever one. I did the new Louboutin one. That one was like a luxury, luxury rum, but I had to know, and that one was beautiful. We've had a very good run of new foundations, and I have even more that I've packed in my bags to test. So this one has quite a natural finish. It's not too glowy. Definitely a light coverage. You can see some redness still. It looks a little dry on my nose, I want to see if we can build up some coverage here. So I want more on my nose and just the center of my face. It did build up a little bit, but this is definitely a light to lighter side of medium coverage. One thing I will say about this as I turn my lights down, it's not sitting the prettiest on the drier parts of my face which right now is my nose. It's not terrible. Most foundations have not been sitting pretty on my nose, so it's not bad, but it certainly isn't, isn't helping the area. But other than that, on the places on my face that don't have dry patches, this looks really nice. It has a natural finish to it, meaning it's not super dewy, but it also isn't matte. It's kind of right there in the middle, which is where I like it. I tend to like my coverage in the middle, my finish in the middle. I think this looks pretty, and it looks very light on the skin. It doesn't look like I have makeup packed on, so I'm liking this so far. For eyeshadow today, I have a new exciting palette from Nomad. They launched their New Zealand stargazing palette. Oh, look at these pretty galactic tones. You can definitely have some fun with this color story. They create one of the best color stories that are not only fun for the theme, but I feel like they also make sense for applying to the eyes. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start off with Night Hike right here using a Refer 16 brush. And I applied a little bit of the foundation on my eyelid just to make everything nice and even color-wise. And I'm going to apply this to my crease like so and just blend it out. If you haven't taken a look at Nomad Cosmetics, they're an indie brand and their color stories are insane. If you are bored of what's happening on the mainstream market, look into Nomad. They are not shy of color. Then I'm going into the Cosmos, which is just a gray color. I'm using an A502 from BK Beauty for this and I'm keeping it lower than the first color. 
These cool tones are so nice. And these transition tones will go with the other colors in the palette. I get just a little bit more of that gray color. Okay. Next up, I'm going into Carter Observatory, which is like a purpley blue and it's very, very pigmented. So I'm blending this out to create a somewhat winged out look. And I'm just keeping it in the outer quarter of the eyelid and blending it out. This is a rougher 14 brush that I'm using and I'm going back to the first brush I used to soften and blend out the outer corner here. You might need to go in with some other shades because this shade right here, Carter Observatory, isn't the easiest to blend. You can get it done, but it takes a little bit of building, blending, and patience. Okay, with a What's Up Beauty R108, I'm going into the tiniest bit of Dark Sky Nation, just a black, which I'm so happy they put a black in this palette. Blacks are underrated. I know they seem scary, but they're perfect for adding that little bit of depth out here. How good is this looking? And this look is really easy. We're going into Milky Way, which is one of the gorgeous multi shifty shades. This one's like a purple blue. And I'm just gonna pop this right in the center, then the outer part of my eye, ah. <laughs> the outer part of my eyelid. Isn't that stunning? And then in different lights, you'll be able to see the shift. If you need to, go back in with a brush to blend the colors. And then to finish off for the eyelid, we're going into Aurora Australis. And this has a crazy shift of like purple and blue and green, and it's a brightening shade. So it's great to open up the eyes as well because sometimes with multi-chrome shades, I find I don't reach for them as much because they're just so dark on my eyelid and they close my eyelids. This is one that will open them up so it won't be overwhelming if you have a smaller eye or are just not going for that look. And I'm just going back and forth between the two lid colors to give it a more seamless blend. You know, I haven't been doing a lot of eyeshadow looks on my channel lately. It just hasn't been what's in, like what's popular because I do mostly focus on the mainstream market. So I do always look forward to a good indie review. So we're going into Magellanic Clouds. This one is another one that's a light multi-chrome shifty shade has some warmth in, in that shift as well. I'm just gonna put a little dot right here. <sighs> this look is so good. We're not even done really because I have to do concealer and stuff, but I'm gonna try a new black gel liner. So this is from Trixie Cosmetics. It's the Hotline Black Gel Liner. They also just launched a white one. I have not used gel liner in a minute. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, I'm just using their brush. That came in the PR package. Oh, I'm out of practice with gel liner, but I used to swear up and down gel liner is easier than like a pen liner. I packed away all my brushes. Otherwise, I would probably dip into my favorite MAC brush for eyeliner, but I don't have it. But I'm not having the easiest time with this angle bun. But the liner is applying nice and smooth. You know the drill with eyeliner. Privacy is needed at this time. Okay, an update on the eyeliner. I think I don't like the brush. It's too stiff. So I had trouble building up the pigmentation in the outer wing. And then of course, my eyeliner ended up a lot thicker than I thought it was going to. I, I had too much fun. But anyways, I want to try this with a brush that I'm more used to, to be able to accurately review it. For the under eyes, I'm going to use the Jones Road Neutralizer Pencil, which is a new color correction pencil that they have. This is going to be perfect since we are wearing such dark eyeshadow. We want to brighten up underneath and I definitely need to get rid of discoloration because sometimes colors like this can emphasize any under eye darkness. So I have the shade Fair Pink, but I'm only going to use it on one eye since I am trying a new concealer. I want to see if I notice a difference today. So I'm taking my BK Beauty brush and just pushing this in because honestly this is looking a little dry, maybe a finger would be better. Use a ring finger, it's softer. This isn't as creamy as I would prefer it to be. 
I like these pencils for touch-ups and whatnot, but on the under eyes, it's a bit dry feeling, but I used my finger to warm it up and it's a lot better now. So you can see it just looks a little bit brighter on the under eye. For concealer, I have the new YSL All Hours Precise Angles Concealer. I'm going to use the shade LN4. Hopefully it's not darker than my foundation. It might be though. Oh, so this has a really interesting tip to it. Oh my gosh, why is that so dark? It'll be okay. It has some peachiness to it, so going to use a A506 from BK Beauty and we're going to push this on the under eyes. I'm going to have to go in with a more precise brush so I don't mess up the eyeliner. Get right up to the lash line. I'm going to get a little bit on this Sigma Dream Definer brush and we're going to get right up on the wing and then blend down. Then same thing here on the inner corner wing. Actually, I'm going to use a different brush. Hmm, the under eyes, I feel like, are looking really, really nice. I think I really like this concealer so far. We'll see how it wears. It's so big with concealers. But it looks very natural, but still gave a good amount of coverage. I'm liking that. I love products like these. Catrice launched their Magic Shaper, which one side has a contour stick and the other side has a highlight stick. I'm gonna go in the shade Medium. So I normally just go in for a contour stick. I don't really like a highlight stick. This doesn't feel super malleable. I'm applying it directly to my skin first just to see. It is nowhere near, say, the Rare Beauty, but it does blend out. Probably will have a better time going directly on top of the product and then applying. I would say so, but it's definitely a softer application. I think it's because the product itself is quite small, so it's hard to get it all over the brush. But you know, Catrice is one of the more, one of the most actually, affordable brands on the market. Sometimes a little bit of compromising is absolutely worth it. So this added some nice shading to the face. I feel like I have 2016 block brows right now. That was, <laughs> Why did I do that today? Gonna contour down the nose a little bit. Going in with this Patrick Ta double-sided brush, which is just amazing for products like this. For the nose, I mean. Then there's the fluffy side that's so nice for blending in. This brush is 100% worth the money. So good. Okay, I'm not a cream highlight person at all, but for the sake of this review, it feels stiff. I'm just gonna press it in the center. Nope, I personally wouldn't use this cream highlighter. I mean, it's okay, it's working okay. Not on the face though. Not really impactful. Mm, I think if you buy this, honestly, it's more so just for the contour side. And then I also have this new Pure Lease Blush Glow BB Cheek and Lip Color. They sent over a lot of different colors. I'm going to try the shade Moving Mauve because it's going to go pretty well with my eye look. Keep in mind, I have not yet set my face, so there's no powder. See the pigmentation level on this? Okay, okay, decent amount, but nothing crazy. Looks like it has a dewy finish. Going to use a stipple brush to apply it. This is applying pretty natural. Honestly, it looks really nice. I don't see it disrupting anything underneath. I, of course, am gonna need to test it out a lot more. This, these are purely just first impressions, but you guys make sure you subscribe to my channel because I do do speed reviews. So I'm putting all of these products into my speed review drawer and then once I've tested them and feel comfortable sharing my thoughts with you guys, they will be featured in an upcoming speed reviews video. So you will hear back. That is a 100% guarantee on my channel. So if you really wanna know what I think about this, subscribe and check out my speed reviews. That looks really pretty. Actually, you know what? Normally, I don't like these on the lips. Let's see. Not bad. You know how sometimes these lip and cheek products can look disgusting and chalky and separate on the lips and not really adhere? Okay, I definitely need to give this more time. 
and I want to test it with a few other different application tools. But first impressions are very strong on this product. Okay, I'm going to set just a little bit with my La Mer powder. Let's finish up the under eyes. So we're heading back into the Nomad New Zealand palette. And I'm not going to do anything crazy. Let's actually try this purple, which actually is kind of a little crazy, right? So this is Aoraki. Huh? Mackenzie. Oh, this is the Mackenzie shade. And I'm just going to run this along the lower lash line. I just wanted to see this color, honestly, and see if it was a vibrant purple. It is. Okay, it doesn't look too different from what I've already applied, but you can see it is a new color. Barely, but you can. I'm trying to keep it as tight to the lash line as possible, and I'm not applying it with too dense of a brush, so that's why it's applying softer, if you will. And then we're going to bring... A little bit of cohesion with this observatory color, which is the dark color I use in my outer corner. I do want to keep it light and not smoky. So I'm going into Aurora Australis and just pressing this on the inner part of my lower lash line. I think I'm going to stay away from the middle eyelid color, which is darker. And keep it nice and purple down there. Boom, done with this palette. For the rest of setting my face, Smashbox launched a new set of face palettes, all for different skin tones that looked really nice. So this one is the Sculpting Glow Face Palette in Pink Saturation, which I think is just gonna go perfect for today's look. So I'm going to start off with the bronzer, of course. And these all just look really pretty. Oh, this brush that I'm using is the Makeup Forever 160. It's so nice for applying bronzer, powder bronzer, over a cream bronzer because it doesn't pick up too much product because sometimes when you have a cream bronzer down before and then you use a brush that's a little bit too dense with the powder bronzer, the powder bronzer will stick to the cream bronzer and not be blendable. So you want a brush that has little to no density. So this one is perfect for that. And then I'm going into the mauve purpley shade right here. Just a little bit and we're going to set the Pure Lease BB stick. Now I definitely want to test the Pure Lease on its own one day but I wanted to share this new launch from Smashbox because Smashbox is kind of, I'm sorry, it's been a little bit boring. But this is the first launch in a while that I've been like, oh, that's really, really nice. And then there is a powder highlight. So I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. That is quite beaming. It is emphasizing texture a little bit. It's not the smoothest look, but it is a very foiled look, which you might be into, especially for this look. I actually do like that foiled look. Perfection! <laughs> eyelashes. We're gonna see if this makes a difference. So Essence just launched a Lash Princess Mascara Primer. I'm going to put this on just one of my eyes. I'm gonna compare it to the other side. It is a white primer. Just realized I packed my eyelash curler. So this might be hard for you to see. So <laughs> I will tell you what I noticed in the mirror, but you might have a hard time telling. Eyelash curler is nowhere to be found right now. I'm gonna give that a second to dry. We look crazy right now. And then I don't believe this is a new mascara at this point, but I do have a Catrice Pure False Lash Mascara to throw on over top. And we're gonna see if the primer made a difference. Normally I find primers do make a difference, but I think it was Benefit or Too Faced. Just launched a lash primer that was black. I like a black lash primer better. I like this fully though. There's a little tiny curve to it. Some mascara wands are too curved and my eyes are too flat, so I don't like the curve. This one has like the perfect, very subtle curve. Mostly like for Asian eyes. I think you'd like this. I definitely think it does look a little thicker on the primer side. Nothing crazy, but I think the buildup is also quicker as well. No, the mascara primer did a little something something. Nothing like life-changing, but she did a little something. 
Side note, I actually really like this mascara and how it coated my lashes, so very positive. For lips, Persona sent me a package and I've heard great things about their lip liners, so I want to try one of those. Let's do Dusk. It's giving Pillow Talk Medium from Charlotte Tilbury. Really smooth, creamy application. Let me draw on my hand. I want to see if it sets. Gorgeous color. Oh, love that color. That's a great my lips, but so much better color. Wearable for every day, but also makes your lips have a little bit of a statement, but not too much of a statement. I don't know if I'm going to end up wearing this, but this is the Buxom Plump Shot Lip Serum in Spellbound, and it's a multi-chrome shade. I just, I have to see this on. They sent over a bunch of colors. I picked a few that I thought I would wear, and this is one of them. Let's see. <laughs> look at that, it's so perfect for this look. I should have blended my lip liner down a little bit more. It almost looks metallic on my lips. You can kind of still see, you know, the lines of my lips. But what is this even supposed to do? I put it on without even knowing. It's a lip plumper, it's supposed to increase volume, reduce lines. I wouldn't say it did that. Honestly, a really pretty gloss. Okay, this look though is desperately calling for some falsies, so I'm gonna pop some on. The look, it's a giving galactic from this palette, and I love it, even though there's blue, and I normally don't like myself in blue eyeshadow. <sighs> this look is gorgeous. I haven't done a look like this in such a long time. So first impressions on everything, for the most part, like I liked everything that I used. The only thing I didn't like was the Trixie eyeliner brush. I need to see the wear on this eyeliner. Loving the finish of the About Face foundation. At first, the Jones Rome did seem a little bit dry as far as the under eye color corrector, but use your fingers and you're fine and you have a nice natural color corrector. YSL concealer, so far so good. I guess, you know, I didn't like the highlight side of this Catrice Magic Shaper, but the bronzer side, it was a little stiff, but it got the job done, so I'm not mad at it, especially for the price point. The Pure Lease Blush Glow does not sit down, so keep that in mind, but it is going to keep your skin hydrated throughout the day. So if you have dry cheeks, this could be a really good product. So far, I'm loving it, but I need to test this on its own, so I don't want to give my full thoughts. Really enjoyed the Smashbox Halo palette. Again, need to use that a lot more. So so far, I'm even liking the mascara and the primer. This was really great. I did have a little bit of issues with getting an even blend in the outer parts of the eye today, but that's to be expected with these types of shades. They're just typically a little bit more difficult to work with, but I loved the pigmentation level on these. The shimmers in this palette is gorgeous. Really, really nice job by Nomad, especially with these colors that are quite difficult to formulate. Loved the Persona lip liners. Now, they do set down a little bit, but it's not an intense set. This color, Dusk, beautiful. Definitely going to be a new one in the rotation. And surprisingly, I'm quite into this Buxom Plump Shot Lip Serum. There's a lot of different multi-chrome shades if you want to check it out. Love it with this lip liner color. And I started to feel a little bit of a sting, so if you don't like sting, you're not going to like this. But it's actually quite pretty. I honestly thought this is a product that I might not enjoy, but very pretty, even for every day, not just with this look. This is such a good combo. So much more into this than I thought I would be. So that's everything that I tried today. As I said before earlier in the video, if you want updates, definitely subscribe to my channel. I'll have them up in the next few weeks as I continue to use these more. Farewell to this background. I have no clue what it's going to look like once I move into my new place, but I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna miss my beautiful city view. But wish me luck on this move. Today is Friday. The movers come on Monday and we've gotta pack up the whole apartment still. Like we, we've got most of my beauty stuff done, but we're gonna be busy this week and packing the apartment. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. I had so much fun playing with some new makeup with you guys. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.